Welcome back once again, CISSP wannabes. I am Colin Weaver. You are watching the IT Dojo CISSP Questions of the Day, where each time I come at you, I bring you two questions to help you get prepared for the CISSP exam. So here comes question number one. Which of the following is the most important reason for you to implement an information classification program or policy in your organization? I'm gonna throw up some answer choices. I want you to look them over, click pause, Think about it. Remember, I'm looking for the best answer or the most important best answer. Yeah, that's it. So anyway, there they are. Look at them. Choice number one says you are doing this because you want to demonstrate a commitment to security to stakeholders. While that sounds incredibly important, and no doubt it is that you should be committed to security and you want your stakeholders to have a warm and fuzzy feeling inside that you are committed to it, um, you need to ask yourself, is that the most important reason why you've implemented an information uh, security policy or an information classification policy? And I'm going to say no, not the most important reason. Totally something you would do, but I'm not looking for just something you would do. I'm looking for the most important reason here. So let's look at number two. It says that you're going to do this because you want to make sure that appropriate levels of encryption are used when storing and transmitting data. Man, that's a true statement. You totally want to use an appropriate level of encryption when you are storing and transmitting data. But is that the most important reason for you to imp implement an information uh, classification policy? No, okay. So even though it's still true and something that you want to do, it's not the most important reason for us doing this. So I'm not going to choose that answer either. How about choice number three then, which says that you wanna make sure that information is appropriately secured based upon its sensitivity to the organization. Yes, that's sufficiently vague enough and high level enough and still true enough and definitely encompasses the umbrella idea behind an information classification policy to go in and say that we wanna make sure that the information that we have, or the resources that we have is adequately protected. And we wanna make sure that we don't overprotect things and we don't wanna underprotect things. So very much so, that answer aligns with what an information classifications policy's most important objectives are. And the last choice, just for good measure, says that you were gonna do this so that you could conform to regulatory requirements for uh, handling PII, personally identifiable information. If there's regulatory requirements that compel you to behave in a certain way as it pertains to PII, they're regulatory requirements, they're kind of tough to get around. So sure, you have to do that, but again, we already know what the right answer in this question is, but you, this is not gonna be the most important reason for you to go in and implement an information classification policy. Certainly something you would do. In fact, every single one of the answers in this question is certainly something that you would do, but again, I'm looking for the most important reason, and it's the third option there. All right, let's move on to question number two. Question number two today says, at which stage in the systems development life cycle would a privacy impact assessment first be performed? All right, I'm gonna click pause, give you the list of phases, and go ahead and look them over, think about it, and when you think you got the right answer, click play, and we shall talk it through. All right, the correct answer here is you are gonna do this in phase one, the initiation phase. Okay, the initiation phase has a lot of things going on in it. You're gonna go in and you're gonna identify who has what roles, uh, in particular the ISSO role, the information system security officer role. Um, that person's gonna help provide a lot of guidance to everybody as the process continues. You're gonna go in and do some initial uh, security requirements, particularly as it pertains to things like laws or regulations, as well as your own internal standards for security. You're gonna identify that stuff early on. Um, there's also a, a sanity check, if you will, that's gonna go on during this phase where you're gonna go in and make sure that uh, everybody knows what's involved. We know that this is practical, that this is viable. We wanna make sure that before continuing any further that we've kind of really had a, you know, a, a good thought in terms of making sure that this is something that we can actually do or that we need to do and that it aligns with whatever the business objectives are. You're also gonna go in and do an initial system categorization where you're gonna go in and identify uh, inf uh, systems or inf information within the system, then you're going to go and describe what the concerns are pertaining to the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of that information. And then you'll typically go in and define uh, levels of severity associated with it. For instance, you know, confident confidentiality, you know, threat to confidentiality is low. And as far as data integrity, say the threat to data, in data integrity is, is medium or high. And then for availability, what the particular threat is, given a particular type of information asset or, or system that's going to be involved in this project, whatever it is that you're doing. 
that kind of stuff is, is straight up, uh, if you're in the United States, which I know that, you know, the CISSP exam is not United States, United States exam, but in the United States, that's for Department of Defense kind of stuff, that's, you know, RMF step one kind of stuff, and, you know, FIPS 199 uh, that you're going to go in and do. Um, there's links down below if you want to take a look at that. It's, it's really useful and beneficial to everybody, even if you're not in the United States. But um, uh, the other thing that you're going to go in and do is you're going to do an initial business impact assessment. You're going to go in and identify the components that are going to be involved in this, uh, what the impact would be to the business if those things were to become unavailable, and uh, you know how long you could go without them, what resources you would need to restore. An initial assessment uh, along those lines is also something that's appropriate to do in the initiation phase. And then also in the initiation phase, which is what this question is about, you're also going to go in and do an initial privacy impact assessment, where you're going to go in and say, uh, does this system utilize personally identifiable information? And if so, in what respects and in what scenarios will it do that? And what requirements are going to be uh, upon us in order to make sure that we've gone in and, and put adequate protections and controls in place for whenever PII is going to be involved? So that's something that is going to get its initial consideration and assessments in the initiation phase, keep in mind that uh, it doesn't just stop there. The, the, the analysis and, and respect given to what impact is going to be had on PII is something that's going to really go throughout the entire life cycle um, of the system that's being developed. But the initial considerations for it, again, what the question's about is in uh, the initiation phase. All right, that's it. Two questions down. Hope they were helpful. I'll see you next time. Bye.